In this screencast, we're going to look at how to draw a Newman projection. So a Newman projection is a way to analyze uh, conformations about a single carbon-carbon bond. And according to this convention, we're going to identify or draw the front carbon as the following. So those are three of the substituents of that front carbon. And then we're looking down a single carbon-carbon bond. So the rear carbon is going to be represented as a circle. And its substituents are going to be represented by three bonds as well. So what I've drawn here is the staggered conformation. The dihedral angle between any substituent is 60 degrees in the staggered conformation. The other conformation that we have to know is the eclipsed conformation. So we're going to go ahead and rotate the front carbon clockwise 60 degrees. So let me go ahead and, and draw that. So we've rotated the front carbon 60 degrees. We're now drawing the rear carbon. Those substituents have stayed the same. So now this is called an eclipsed conformation. So when you have substituents eclipsing, it tends to be higher energy. So in our potential energy versus dihedral angle curve that we've drawn, the eclipsed conformations are in higher energy. Let's go ahead and put this to practice by looking at 3-methylpentane three three about the C2-C3 bond. So we're going to specify that carbon number 2 is the front carbon Carbon number three is the rear carbon. Let's go ahead and first draw out the wedge dash uh, drawing of 3-methylpentane. So we see that pentane is the C5. That's going to be our parent chain. Let's go ahead and draw a C5. So we have two carbons, three, four, and five. Then at the 3 position, we have a 3-methyl group. So let's number these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then off carbon 3 is methyl. So notice that I haven't drawn a wedge or a dash yet. And we're going to need to do that to um, draw our, our Newman projection. So I'm just going to draw this as a wedge. So the methyl group is a wedge. That means it's coming out towards us. And for clarity's sake, I'm going to draw in the dash. And we know that's a hydrogen based on the convention. So for our Newman projection, we want to look down the C2-C3 bond. So if we imagine our eye is in the plane of the screen, that's the bond that we're looking down. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the front carbon for the Newman projection. To, to kind of aid in this discussion, let's go ahead and put in the, the wedge dash for carbon 2 as well. We know that both substituents are hydrogen. So when I draw this first Newman projection, the first carbon, I'm going to put the methyl group at C1 down. And then the other two substituents, which are both hydrogen, So we're, we're looking down C2, C3. This is carbon 2. This is carbon 1. Now we're drawing the rear carbon. 
And we're going to draw the staggered conformation to begin with. So let's put in those substituents. If we're looking down this bond, the methyl group at C3 is going to be on the right. This hydrogen is going to be on the left. And the ethyl group consisting of C4 and C5 is going to be on the top. So based on the way we've drawn this, we can estimate what the energy of this conformation is going to be. We look at all the interactions, and the, the main one we have to be concerned with here is this methyl-methyl-gauche interaction. So we're going to call that steric hindrance between these two. And we've seen that the energy penalty for that interaction is 3.8 kilojoules per mole. In this molecule, we, we can say that the ethyl group and this methyl are anti to one another. So anti is 180 degree relationship. Let's, let's do a rotation about the front carbon atom. So to keep things uh, consistent, let's go ahead and do a, a 60 degree rotation in the clockwise fashion. So we're, we're rotating this way. Here's the front carbon atom. We have hydrogen, hydrogen, and methyl. We draw the rear carbon atom. Let's go ahead and draw in those substituents. We have the ethyl. We have the methyl. And then we have hydrogen. So let's go ahead and, and estimate the energy cost of, of this eclipsed conformation. So we know that a, a methyl hydrogen eclipsing is plus 6 kilojoules per mole. We're, we're approximating that this ethyl group is a methyl, and we're calling it 6. And we can see from the other two eclipsing interactions that they're both methyl hydrogens. So these are both plus 6. So the molecule has a total of plus 18 kilojoules per mole of steric interaction in this conformation. So let's go ahead and continue our analysis of this. We'll do another 60 degree rotation. We're going to draw the front carbon. Now we have the methyl group up here. Hydrogen, hydrogen. We have the rear carbon represented as a circle. Those substituents have not moved. And then our final substituent of the ethyl group. If we estimate the energy of, of this conformation, we can see that the main thing here is, is a gauche interaction. So we're going to approximate that as a methyl-methyl gauche. So this is going to be plus 3.8. Let's do another 60 degree rotation. We draw our front carbon now. CH3, hydrogen, hydrogen, 
our rear carbon, CH3, H, and then our final substituent is the ethyl. So now this conformation has all three uh, energy penalties that we've looked at. So the biggest one, we're going to approximate the ethyl group as a methyl. So that's going to be plus 11 kilojoules per mole. We have the methyl hydrogen, that's plus 6. And then the hydrogen hydrogen is plus 4. So in this conformation, we have 11 plus 10. This conformation costs 21 kilojoules per mole. Let's go ahead and do one more rotation, 60 degrees. Our front carbon will look like this. So now we have hydrogen, hydrogen. We draw in our rear carbon as the circle. We have the ethyl group up top. Methyl group to the right, and hydrogen. So if we estimate the energy penalty for this conformation, we can see that we have two gauche interactions. So we have one here, and then one here. So each of these is plus 3.8. That's going to get us plus 7.6 kilojoules per mole for this conformation. So this screen hask has been a, a brief um, tutorial on how to draw a Newman projection, demonstrating how to convert from a name to a wedge dash, then converting that into the Newman projection then doing 60 degree rotations and estimating the energy contribution required to do that rotation.